Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Today's episode is not about this. It is about this, the Western Digital Velociraptor 1 terabyte 10,000 RPM hard drive. So let's talk evolution of storage here for a little bit, guys. We started out with slow, low RPM drives that had very little in terms of caching capabilities. Along came bigger caches to help compensate for the slower drives, and we're still talking volatile caches, so RAM-based caches. Okay, then we got faster spindle speeds until we hit this wall where 7200 RPM is still pretty much the de facto standard for spindle speeds for a desktop drive unless it's a storage oriented drive such as a WD Green. So Western Digital came along and went, okay, we've got these 10,000 RPM drives in the enterprise space, let's bring out something that brings 10,000 RPM drives to the general consumer and bam, out came the Raptor. The problem with the Raptor was, especially at the beginning, it was very low capacity. It was a 36 gig drive, which even then was not a lot of storage. It was kind of like the same problem we had with SSDs when they came out. More on that in a minute. So the Raptor evolved. It became the Velociraptor. Capacities went from 36 to 74 to 150 to 300 gigs. And I think there was a 600 gig one at some point. And then the product line just kind of got quiet because SSDs started to get more affordable and started to get higher in capacity. However, we reached a point now where SSDs are capped at around that 256 to 512 gig capacity. Really 256 when it comes to actual affordable uh, usable, buyable SSDs. And yes, they're much faster than hard drives, but is there room for a middle ground? Western Digital thinks so. The Velociraptor is a one terabyte drive that comes in at a very reasonable price point, does perform better than a traditional 7200 RPM drive, even though these are available in up to three or four terabyte capacities, and fits that niche where for sequentials, it might not actually be that much faster because a Velociraptor is a two and a half inch drive, much like, I mean, you can sort of call it a competitor, the Momentus XT from Seagate. However, it comes with a big fat heatsink, a 10,000 RPM, platter spindle speed and dramatically better random read and write performance than 7200 RPMs or even a Momentus XT while maintaining excellent sequential performance but not quite having that same oomph that an SSD will give but then being cheaper. So it's, it's all about trade-offs. Now caching is the future in my personal opinion. This is me not wearing my NCIX hat, my Linus hat. Caching is the future. However, it'll be very interesting to take this Velociraptor against a more traditional 7200 RPM drive, an SSD, as well as a Momentus XT cache drive to see how they all compare because caching still suffers from very small caches and a very limited number of options available in the market. In fact, the Momentus XT for consumer drives is pretty much it right now. Let's talk performance. So I have three different scenarios. One is a three terabyte drive. So this is just your three terabyte 7200 RPM drive. This is a Seagate Barracuda. I figured, you know, what the hey, I'll throw it up against its competition and see how it fares. Next, we've got the Velociraptor one terabyte. And finally, we have the Crucial M4. Now with Crystal Disk Mark, right there. With Crystal Disk Mark, we can't really do anything meaningful with the Momentus XT because the Momentus XT being a caching drive doesn't really show off its strength unless you're using real world applications. So Crystal Disk Mark won't work very well for that. So you can see here, our 7200 RPM drive gets pretty much destroyed by the Velociraptor. So in everything from sequentials, where it's about 30% faster, to randoms, where it's up to twice as fast, or even like three times as fast when you get to deeper Q depths, which is for when you're hammering the drive really, really hard. You're throwing a lot of different IOs at it. It's got to sort things out and you really see the benefit of that 10K spindle speed. However, when you step up to an SSD, all of these numbers go completely out the door because we're talking orders of magnitude, better performance from an SSD. The drawback is that a 512 gig SSD, uh, this in this case a Crucial M4, will cost you about the same as a one terabyte Velociraptor. So actually it'll cost you more than a one terabyte Velociraptor, sorry. So you're left with sort of this dilemma. What would you use a Velociraptor for? And the 
Easy answer is anything where you need the extra I.O. performance, but you also need capacity in a meaningful way. So you don't necessarily need three terabytes of capacity, but you need better performance, and you don't need SSD performance, but you need better capacity. So that is the fine line that it straddles. Now, the Momentus XT was an interesting scenario because, and I just want to bring this up, Momentus XT Run 1 from PC Mark 7 was really cool because it actually got a dramatically better storage score than the Velociraptor. So the Momentus XT scored 3,000 3D Marks, whereas the Velociraptor scored do, 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 only 2,200 3D Marks. And I'm not going to zoom in too detailed into these except to show you uh, a, a bit of a cross-section of the Momentus XT scores. Check this out. So Windows Defender, which is a great example of something that would benefit from the 10K spindle speed versus the 7200 RPM drive with caching, it's got 4.85 megabytes per second in the third run, but only 1.8 megs per second in the first run. When you contrast that, to the Velociraptor, which got 2.75 megs per second across the board, you can see where the benefit could lie with a Momentus XT, where you're doing a lot of repetitive tasks, such as in an OS environment, versus with a Velociraptor, where you're using it for data that's infrequently reaccessed and can be stored in the cache, like if you're using it as a scratch disk for video editing or photo editing where you're working with really large files, that is where the Velociraptor could really shine. So I think that pretty much wraps it up for today. Thank you for checking out today's NCIX Tech Tips episode on the RAR Velociraptor. Don't forget to subscribe.